Hey, what's up? Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson at real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or on onespotmedia.com. We are also live on Music99 and gojamaica.com. If you have any questions on today's subject, CSEC information technology, of course, you can send them into Television Jamaica. Facebook page, of course, send it to our Facebook page or the Instagram at televisionjamaica.com. Today's lesson is fillable forms. I am Leo Lewis. All right, so today we're going to look at one of the newer topics in the CSEC syllabus, and it has to do with creating fillable forms for any kind of data entry. We normally did it with just working with tables and we just designed the tables and of course anybody could just write in and you print or you print the tables or print the sheets and anybody could just write in into the tables but cxc has moved now to the point where we are using what what we call fillable forms it's electronic so you'd send the actual soft copy document to an individual to fill it out and they'll basically type on it all right so today we're going to look at some of the controls relating to fillable forms and it's going to be very very succinct and very brief so that you can experiment later on when you when you go on <clears throat> um when you go on your laptop or whatever you're using but before that our first tip for today our first study tip is study for mastery all right study for mastery the idea behind this is that you just don't want to think about passing the exams alone. You want to ensure that you know the topic, you've understood it, you memorize it, and you're able to apply it. Because you're not just learning for passing an exam, you're learning for life. And of course, IT is all around us and you'll, you are going to be using it. So make sure you study for mastery. And when you master the subject, you'll be good right through, all right? So what are fillable forms? Essentially what they are are just any kind of form that allows you some kind of data capture. Of course, I said before, the difference was that you are able now to do it electronically. You'll type using your, your keyboard, etc. You use your mouse to move around it instead of using an actual printed hard copy document or hard copy sheet. And you can use them for application forms, surveys, questionnaires. And we're going to look at the different controls that help you to create fillable forms. But before we, we talk about how we create it, the first thing that we want to remind you of is the idea of validating your data. And I tell my students normally, whenever we're talking about val validating your data, you want to ensure that it's foolproof, all right? And this whole thing of foolproofing, you want to think of it from the perspective that the person who might be using your form is either an idiot or a hacker. In other words, if you wanted to put in a control that says enter your first name, maybe the person enters a number. Maybe the person decides to enter a date for the first name, just trying to be coy. Maybe the person is a hacker and wants to enter something like a routine or a little piece of program that will mess up your form. So as you create your form, you want to think about what would an idiot put in into the form or what would a hacker want to put in the form. And that way you can pay attention to what information you want to enter or you want the person to enter. All right. So how do we find the controls for this particular feature? Well, when you open Microsoft Word, you have to click on the file menu, click on options. Then when you click on options, you click on customize ribbon. Customize ribbon, then you click on developer. All right. And that should ensure that you find the developer, developer toolbar or ribbon that allows you to add the control. So that is options. So you click file, options, customize ribbon, developer. And when you click on developer, you will see a new ribbon pop up on your screen. And this new ribbon will be the developer ribbon. Now there are a number of sections to your ribbon, but there is only one section that we're going to be focusing on. The first section um, at the top where you see visual basic macros and record macro. 
this might be something that you'll do at the Cape level where you record an actual routine. So let's say, for instance, I'm in Microsoft Word and I wanted to increase the font size of a particular word. Let's say I want to increase it to 20. I want to bold it and underline it. And I want to change the font to something like Monotype Cursiva. What I do is to enable a record or record the macro, do the operation, stop the recording, and then that macro can be saved so I can apply it to the rest of my document. So those of you doing keep IT, that is something that you need to go into, you know, macro and the use of functions, etc. And, and then we have Visual Basic, and Visual Basic is Microsoft's programming environment that lies behind um, Microsoft Word and all the Microsoft Office um, applications and so that particular VB allows you to do some small programming that helps to change your, your, your documents dynamically. Then we have the add-ins and com add-ins. Now you, you're not necessarily going to be using this, you won't be using this anytime soon but for those of you who are doing computer science now and you might be thinking of doing programming when you go on to university, wherever this university might be, you might be thinking of creating small programs that are called components and these components allow you to be in or allow this program to be installed directly on your computer as a background piece of um, piece of routine that runs and helps your computer based on whatever software you might be using. But the key part we're looking at is the section that says controls. And there are several controls that we'll be just quickly looking at because you should already know them. And if you don't know them, of course, you can always drop me an email I'm at leo.lewis1 at gmail.com so I can send you the information. I've gotten a whole heap of requests for information already and I've given out tons of information. So if you still want it, leo.lewis1 at gmail.com. All right, so we have the controls and inside the controls, we have what is called a rich text, all right, which allows you to enter textual data. Then we have plain text. Now remember, these are controls and we're going to see why we call them controls in a minute. Then we have our image which allows us to put images in our form. Checkbox. And a checkbox is just like a tick. All right? And um, I think by default, Microsoft Word allows an X inside it, but it's still called a checkbox. Uh, and then we have a combo box, which gives us sort of a list, just like the, um, a drop-down list or like a drop-down menu, same difference. Then we have some legacy controls, which are older controls, but of course, you might not use these, but we're going to jump into some of them just in case you, you need to do, to do it, even for your SBA, because you do have a fillable form for your SBA. And then we have a drop-down list, and we have a date picker, all right? So these are the essential ones that we need to pay attention for your controls. So make sure that you remember how to find it. You go to, you go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, Developer. And when you open the developer ribbon, you should see these controls, all right? So the plain text, we can see what it's used for. Just captures textual data. And this is what the icon looks like. You can see the control there. And then whenever you have a control open, you can right click on it or click on the properties menu. And the properties menu brings up properties for that particular control. And if you notice here, we have several controls here. Um, or several properties here, the title, the tag, and we're going to look at those quickly as well. Then we have the, um, the control cannot be deleted. Now, and let me just spend some time here. Whenever you create a form or a fillable form, the purpose of the form is for other people to give your data. So you don't want the persons who will be giving your data you don't want them to be de deleting the information or deleting the actual control. So this selection allows you to make this static so that no one can delete the actual control. They'll be able, of course, to clear out information that's in the control. So if it's a text box, they could possibly clear out what's in the text box, but they won't be able to delete the control itself. And then we have the contents cannot be edited. Well, you, don't, you want to leave that part blank because you want the persons who are putting the information to have the 
um, flexibility to enter whatever they want. And then finally at the bottom we have allow carriage returns and that means the, impl or the use of paragraphs. You can have more than one line. All right. And so that is how you look at your text. So if we look at look at the properties carefully, you can already see some things that you, are, you can be quickly acquainted with or you are acquainted with and you can quickly um, manipulate. The rich text is the very same thing, but there are just slight differences. Um, you are already automatically allowed multiple lines with this particular rich text and there might be some other formatting features you are allowed. You'll notice there's a bounding box and then there's something that says user style or format. The same thing with the plain text. You can actually style your, your font. So whenever a person is entering information, it doesn't have to be the same plain text that you have in the form. You could actually change the style of this particular text so that there's some difference in your form and you can differentiate your part of the document from the entries. All right. And then we have the picture. And this is straightforward, of course. This allows you to enter a picture inside or, or to, to drop a picture inside your form. Um, pretty easy stuff right here. And I'd like to spend more time, of course, on how you'd create it. So I'm just going to push on right quickly. All right. And then we have our checkbox. All right. Um, and this checkbox can be placed with simple lists that you just basic, basically make a selection with. All right. Or an X beside or whatever the case is. Um, and of course, the properties, you can see the properties at the right. And you can change the symbol a particular symbol that is used for checking. You can choose your own kind of symbol. Uh, some persons prefer to use a tick. The default is an X here. But again, it is your choice. It is your form. So you can go ahead and create that, that change or that difference. All right. Um, and then we have the combo box. And the combo box has the same kind of, um, the same kind of setting as a drop down list. And you, you are able to select from a set of uh, a set of selections or, or a set of items by just clicking on the, the arrow to the right okay and then we have this properties section here and the part I like to highlight is a section that says drop down list properties or combo box properties uh, what you're allowed to do here is add um, you can add the properties themselves or add the actual selections themselves. So if it's a drop down list or a combo box, same, same setting. All right. Um, and then we have the date picker, which basically allows you to pick a date from a, a small monthly calendar. But of course, you can change the date or change the month on the calendar. Um, and you can, of course, pick a date from that instead of having somebody to enter the actual date. And of course, you'd want to use this because it allows you to create the, the very specific format you, you want for the date. Okay, because remember, we have different date formats. In Jamaica here, we tend to use, um, we tend to use the UK format. And so we, are, we have the day, month, year, and oftentimes it's two digits, two digits, and then four digits. With the American standard, it's month, day, year, um, and of course, if you want, you can add actual days of the week. And so the formats can change. The formats can be manipulated. So in a case like this, when you want somebody to enter date of birth or something of that nature, you don't necessarily want them to enter it. You can use this date picker, which is much simpler, straightforward, and you won't have much worries. All right. All right. So let's say, you know, I am an, I'm in charge of a band. And I want, well, not even in charge of a band, but I'm trying to get a band together. And I want to send out a form to persons who would apply to be a part of my band. And let's call my band Back in Black. All right. And let's say, you know, we want them to come and to fill out, well, not come, but fill out the form. I'd have to sit and to think about what exactly do I want them to fill out the form with what information is necessary for me as a band leader as a person trying to get the band together and so that's the first thing you have to do whenever you're creating your forms you have to think about what information is vital to you if the information isn't vital then you can do away with it how you determine the vitality of the information or how vital it is 
it all depends on what you want for your particular organization or what you're doing for your SBA. You have to determine how vital it is. In my case, I want people to play in my band or I want band members, I want musicians. So I'm now going to justify why I want, what I want from them and why I want it. Of course, I'd need to know their first name, their last name. And in bands, you might have <laughs> have the funny scenario where everybody have, a <laughs> have an alias. Um, I don't have one, but you know, people might have an alias. Uh, I don't know, weeded, or, uh, well, no, that's not right. Um, let me not say that, sorry. Um, but you know, you might have an alias, all right? Peter Tosh might have had an alias, Bob Marley might have had an alias, and then, okay, even Family Man Barrett, that, that is not his government name, I can, ass I can assure you. Family Man Barrett was the one who played bass, right? And so that could be his alias. Then we talk about date of birth, all right, which would be important, possibly depending on how, how well, it might be important in the fact that depending on the age of the person, you know that they, are certain, they might be very responsible or they might be very young, you're not sure their experience. Um, and then beyond that, we might want their actual contact information, which is home address. And the last time I came, we did some database where we talk about splitting an address. In this case, I split the address into possibly four different things, street, town, parish, or province, and then country. And of course, if we're looking at it from the perspective of a global environment or a global community, I might want ba a band member from France. I might want somebody from US. So the country might be very important to me. All right, then we have the other contact information, which includes cell phone number, right? That's a must know. Everybody has, might have a cell phone now. An email address, because I guess if you're going to send the form to that person, you might want to send the form via email, which makes sense. All right, and a website. There are some musicians who might have a website where you can actually see where them playing or you see them doing a little riff. So and that might be important to me. I might want to be able to see that. And then we have music or musical experience. Music experience. So I'm breaking it down as to the information that I want. Of course, you might want more information than I have here, but hey, this is what I want. So I want years in the music, in the business, the name of the bands they might be affiliated with, the instruments they played, the genres they are, acqu they are acquainted with, um, prior band affiliation, meaning the last band possibly, events that they've already played at, and then maybe thirdly, writer and publisher's affiliation. Most often than not, musicians, whether they are writers or whomever they are, have some kind of affiliation with an organization like a ASCAP or a JCAP or JAMS. And, and JAMS uh, is like the producers, uh, producers, let me not say fraternity, but producers association, JCAP for the writers and publishers. Uh, and of course, you have a ASCAP that is US based. So some of these musicians might have their kind of affiliation. All right. So here I am now, making sure that I have a list of the things I want in my form. And that's where you start. You want to qualify what is in your list. Maybe in time to come, I might be thinking, okay, one of these things can go because of a certain reason. And so here I am now, I'm qualifying my, my list. All right. And then since I've qualified my list, what I'm going to do is to work out a design, all right? Work out a design. And this design is going to be subjective. It's going to be dependent solely, it's going to be dependent solely on my preference. So if I'm a good designer, then maybe it will work. If I'm a terrible designer, Maybe it won't work, all right? So let me just quickly jump through my design. This is my design. Um, so I have a header. Um, I could have had something like the address, etc., in the header. Uh, and then I have, I have some things going down. I have a table coming down. And as you can see, I've already placed some controls and changed the font color of the controls that way i can easily differentiate what um what's there all right um 
and then of course i have them in different sections and you might be able to see that all right so we're going for a break right now but when we come back school's still not out